Awesome. Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Florix, for having me out here to talk about tech entrepreneurship. So um, I am, as uh, was introduced, Juan Garzon, Executive Director of Innovate Charlotte, and we are an organization that supports entrepreneurship and the startup community throughout Charlotte. Now, even if you have no thought about uh, starting your own business, um, that's not something that really comes top of mind to you, I ask you to just stay a couple more minutes because you'll see that there are reasons. What are you popping in there on me? <laughs> we'll go check that one. Reasons why you should learn about the entrepreneurial community and the ecosystem, even if you yourself aren't planning on starting a company. So I know I'm the the last talk here between before uh, all of the uh, the happy hours and everything else like that, but I ask you that you bear with me. So as I mentioned before, Innovate Charlotte is a nonprofit organization that exists to support the high growth entrepreneurial ecosystem. So we do this through a variety of different programs, mentorship, events, and resource guides. But in short, we help startups grow. And that's a term that often gets thrown around, right? Startups. What is a startup? And uh, one of the things that I'm here to tell you is it's not the same as simply starting a business. A startup is different than simply starting a business. A business, you know, you've got an established business model. Uh, maybe you're pretty local and you can have a brick and mortar or you're looking to create a lifestyle business for yourself. A startup is something else entirely. It's when you use uh, the scalable, the, the, uh, when you solve a problem or you have a hypothesis on how to solve a problem and you find a way to deliver a solution in, in something that has never been done before. And usually you do this in, in a manner that can scale, which means technology. That's why you hear this term of tech startup and tech entrepreneurship so much. And it's very different than simply starting a new dry cleaning or a new restaurant or uh, you know, doing some consulting from your home. And we need more people in technology exploring entrepreneurship and learning about entrepreneurial thinking and methodologies because Sorry, my mask is, uh, because we have a lot of challenges that need solving. So this is why you should learn more about the entrepreneurial ecosystem. There are some people who are technologists or who see problems and want to solve them with technology, um, and they're going to become startup founders. They're going to go, they're going to start something, maybe it'll grow, maybe it'll be successful, and uh, they come out, you know, IPO or get acquired or grow that into a business that is um, having a real impact on that industry. Or you may become a startup employee. I don't know what's happening with it. Um, you may go work for an entrepreneurial company where you are being a part of that solution. You know, maybe you've seen uh, you like to solve new problems and you want to work in fintech, right, in the payment space at a company like Avid Exchange or you want to work for an earlier stage startup that's solving problems in healthcare or solving problems in, uh, in the consumer side, and you want to be part of that kind of an environment. But more and more, we're seeing the last one, and that is the idea of the intrapreneur. You ask any CEO nowadays, and they will tell you that they want more employees that have entrepreneurial experience or that understand the entrepreneurial process than we've ever heard before. And the reason for that is because if you understand the entrepreneurial process, you know how to identify problems, put resources together, solve those problems, and do it in the most efficient way possible. So corporations want intrapreneurs, and you can be an intrapreneur within a corporation and own a problem, own a team, own a solution, essentially be your own startup, still have a full-time job with all the corporate benefits and everything that comes with it, and more and more corporations are turning to this kind of thinking, which is why even if you have no interest right now in becoming a startup founder yourself, you should still learn about the entrepreneurial process and the community and ecosystem that supports entrepreneurs here in Charlotte. So how do you do this? How do you get plugged into this ecosystem? Well, the first thing that you should be aware of is that we do have an entrepreneurial ecosystem. An ecosystem is the, uh, all of the organizations that support entrepreneurs on their path. So this is going to consist of things like accelerators and incubators, or sometimes you might have higher ed institutions, colleges and universities that have technology centers or small business centers. 
You have different boot camps and workshops, networking groups for specific industries or specific technologies, mentor programs, pitch events, you know, conferences, even co-working spaces, which are becoming a popular place for uh, corporations to send their employees to have more flexibility. Many of them are actually small entrepreneurial ecosystems in and of themselves, where you have technologists, founders, sometimes investors, other entrepreneurs, and uh, all working together to solve problems and create new value. This slide right here is a small snapshot of what the Charlotte entrepreneurial ecosystem looks like. As you notice, lots of logos, right? A logo soup right here. But all of these organizations in some way support entrepreneurs or the entrepreneurial journey and thinking. And it can be overwhelming. It can be uh, you know, a lot to sort of take in and say, well, where do I start? So becoming more aware that there is an ecosystem, that there are resources for anything from helping you flesh out your idea to meeting founders and other entrepreneurs to simply learning how entrepreneurs build what they build so that you can be a better tech employee, all of that exists in this ecosystem. And we have organizations like mine, Innovate Charlotte, uh, that helps you navigate this. You can sit down with anybody at our, on our team and uh, walk you through what you're looking for and the best resources to get matched up with. The second step that I would recommend to anybody that wants to get plugged in is to attend an event. There are lots of events that are open to people who are simply browsing, learning, maybe you have an idea or you just want to get better connected with that ecosystem. And you can do that in a couple different events, and I'm going to mention a couple just as an introduction. One of them is Pitch Breakfast, which is another organization uh, that I'm involved with. Every month, we have a small Shark Tank-like pitch event where entrepreneurs come and they will present their businesses in that sort of investor pitch style format. And they do that to a panel of investors who act as the sharks. And they give them feedback, advice, help them improve their pitch and improve their businesses overall. And they do this in front of a live audience. So anybody is welcome to come, attend, learn about the different ideas and the different companies that are being started but also learn from the investors as they give feedback and pointers on how to improve their business and how to improve their presentations. There's also larger conferences and venture conferences like Venture 135, which is coming in November. Venture 135 is gonna have areas of focus around FinTech, health tech, insure tech, and different industries. You're also gonna have other conferences throughout the year that focus on healthcare or focus on esports or digital uh, commerce and things like that. Venture 135 features a local pitch day where Charlotte companies in any industry can go present to the venture capital community. And it's one of those events or events like it that you should have on your radar if you're interested in how does that work? How do companies go out and talk to investors? What do investors look for and what do how do investors react when these types of companies are presented. There are also events like Startup Weekend. There are Startup Weekend events happening all over the world. Right now, many of them are virtual. And there's actually a virtual Startup Weekend event that's organized by in Winston-Salem, but is available to people in Charlotte that will be happening in November during Global Entrepreneurship Week. I highly, highly recommend that you check out a Startup Weekend because it is what many people describe as a three-day MBA in all things entrepreneurship. The way it works is you arrive on a Friday, you pitch an idea, and then you vote on the best ideas that you've heard. The ideas with the highest votes form teams, and if, you, if, your, vote, uh, if your idea didn't get a team, then you join a team, and you work as a team all through the weekend until Sunday night when you present your idea to everybody. It is amazing how well developed some of these ideas and companies are in just three days. And it really becomes a crash course in networking, product development, ideation, customer discovery, and all the things that you need to do to not just build and grow a successful business, but also to have that idea of how to solve problems in an entrepreneurial way if you were considering being an intrapreneur. 
I highly recommend that event. And lastly, you can host, you can attend any of the events that we put on at Innovate Charlotte. They really are designed to give you an introduction to the entrepreneurial community. Innovate Charlotte puts on events like one called Intro to the Startup Community, which is exactly what it sounds like. We go through all of those logos that I showed you before, and we talk about the different resources, events, and opportunities that exist for people who are interested in the entrepreneurial process. The third thing that I would add is to have a give first mentality. That is really what makes the entrepreneurial ecosystem and that community in Charlotte go around. And it's something that I've heard entrepreneurs talk about the Charlotte ecosystem even more so than they have in other markets. And that is that everybody in our community really comes in with this give first mentality. And as a result of that, they um, you know, come in and say, how can I help? They come in and they volunteer for another uh, for an event, or they try to help entrepreneurs with connections that they might have, whether it's in their industry or whether it's to investors or simply ideas. Yes, I'll sit down with you, hear your idea, and uh, give you feedback, or I'll let you know uh, if there's somebody else in my network that might be a valuable resource for you. Several years ago, we had an event to celebrate entrepreneurs here in the community. And uh, not by design, this was not a uh, female founder only event, but we had a handful of women entrepreneurs who were all very successful and were being celebrated for the wins that they've had over the past year. I know most of the ladies in this picture, and I knew most of them when they were, um, well, I, I know all of them and most of them back when they were starting their companies. And I can tell you that every single one of them had a give first mentality back then. And even today, even though many of them are running successful companies, they are the type of people who, if you said, hey, I'm thinking of an idea, I have, um, you know, I I'm working through something or even a, a problem, uh, an issue at work, and I'm trying to figure out how would an entrepreneur think about it, they would all be happy to give you the time and uh, talk through those ideas. I'll show you some of the companies that they, uh, they have founded and maybe you recognize some of the logos here, um, but these are all people who have learned to really have that give first mentality and then have used their relationships and what they've learned in that entrepreneurial ecosystem to grow some amazing companies like the Pink Mentor Network or Sign Up Genius or Skip Town or Carewell. And it really is what defines the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So, just to repeat that again, if you are interested in getting plugged in to this entrepreneurial world, to the startup community here in Charlotte, having that give first mentality will take you a long way. So if you want to learn more about that entrepreneurial space, one of the things that I recommend and I mentioned earlier is the event intro to the Charlotte startup community. We're gonna have one of these events coming up um, in November during Global Entrepreneurship Week. So if you follow Innovate Charlotte on social media or sign up for our newsletter, you'll find out when that event is and you're more than welcome to attend. Uh, I keep mentioning this Global Entrepreneurship Week. It is the second week in November and there's gonna be a week full of events, programs and opportunities that uh, if anybody is interested in exploring what the startup scene is like here in the community, then you can definitely do that during the events of that week. And lastly, you know, you can always reach out to me, uh, Juan, J-U-A-N, at I-N-C-L-T dot O-R-G to ask any questions or if you have um, something that you're working on and you want to know what resources would be best for you or if you just want any feedback, you know, if there's something that I can help with or other people in our network that can provide you that feedback, then we're certainly happy to do so. And with that, I did wanna leave some time in case there were any uh, questions or if anybody had any other insights or thoughts on the tech entrepreneurial community here in Charlotte. Uh, I had one question for you, Juan. Um, this morning, our keynote speaker uh, was uh, Ash from Credit Karma and Fran West from Charlotte uh, Economic Development introduced her. Can you talk to us about um, a little bit about how the startup community that we're building um, and the economic development of Charlotte works? Because we see so many big companies moving in, but we also know 
Stacy Cassio and Pink Mentor Network. Th those are those are grassroots things that are starting here. How many are coming up from Charlotte, and then how many are moving to Charlotte to be innovators and startups? Well, th the reality is that um, there's a lot of people moving to Charlotte. <laughs> Um, and whether they're moving to Charlotte with an idea, they're moving with an established company. Charlotte is a community of, you know, um, people from all over the place. And it's one of the things that really makes Charlotte amazing. It's because of that that I think we're starting to see this um, mix of ideas as somebody comes in from the Northeast, you know, and they're working on something or they're used to a different kind of, uh, um, you know, different solutions or, or different uh, uh, backgrounds or industries. They meet up with somebody else. And that's where those, what we call collisions happen. Somebody comes from California, they worked at a startup, they know how to scale things. Someone else comes from New York, they're, they're, they're trying to solve a FinTech problem. They get together and all of a sudden they say, hey, between your connections and my experience, right, we've got the makings of a good solution, of a good company. And it's because these people are coming in that we're starting to see that entrepreneurial ecosystem really grow. It is very different than what many of I would say many of us, but many people in government especially, think about when it comes to economic development. Usually when we hear economic development announcements, they're referring to spending millions of dollars to attract a large corporation to have them move their headquarters here and to uh, create you know, a couple hundred jobs or, or something like that. And that's absolutely fine. But entrepreneurs have an outsized impact on the local ecosystem. Um, and if you have, instead of, you know, spending that money on a, corp on a corporation to bring 400 jobs, you invested that money in 400 entrepreneurs, the returns are, you know, exponentially more because of the impact that entrepreneurship has. Entrepreneurs, you know, support the, the local ecosystem more. They create more growth, more job opportunities. They're innovating and they're changing industries. They're really changing the world. And uh, it's something that I get very excited about and want more people to think of economic development in that way than just moving a company a corporate headquarters here i have another one for you but i want to make sure i'm giving opportunity perfect hi juan thank you again for the presentation um my name is lana and i'm with kepler team um it's a small startup here in charlotte and most of our projects are for other startups and what we're trying to do is approach a larger corporations and enterprises. Do you have any tips or suggestions of how to break into that culture, how to find the right shareholders that we can connect to and win a project? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you've got a lot of companies, especially in Charlotte, a lot of our startups tend to be B2B. They're solving problems that they saw within a, another business, right? You might work for a bank, you might work for a healthcare system, and you might be dealing with an issue and you're saying, this is very inefficient. Why is it always done this way, right? Because that's just the way companies can do it. And you might say, with a little technology, right, with a little bit of work, we can create a solution that can help not just my company, but other companies as well. Many of our entrepreneurs are that. They leave corporation, corporations or they leave corporate America to solve problems that they themselves experienced. The more we have that, the more corporations will be willing to bet on smaller solution providers and startups themselves to, to provide those solutions. But it's still, there's a cultural piece there. And you know, Charlotte's not exactly uh, known to be the most risk-taking corporate community that there is. And so we still have that barrier of you know, corporations out there that maybe, even though they're Charlotte headquartered, might have their procurement team in another part of the country. And even being here local does not mean that you get that edge in getting in. But that is something that is changing overall. And the more we have people who have that corporate connection, the more you're gonna see opportunities for small entrepreneurs like yourselves to uh, break into that kind of corporate, uh, corporate space. So not so much a tip, but uh, you know, things are getting better. We have time for one more question, if anybody has one. I'll ask another one then, because I had like 20. I was super into this, I love it. Um, so you said uh, a number of the um, startups that you see in Charlotte are B2B. Are they, and then you also showed the the logo soup and all the, the girls in the red jacket, all this great stuff. Is there a trend of what, or a theme of what Charlotte 
uh, startups look like? Are they mostly fintech? Are they mostly healthcare? Are they mostly women? Are they mostly um, coming from um, people who are new to the tech industry or have been in the tech industry for a thousand years? What's what's the themes you're seeing in 2021 following COVID? It's that's a really difficult one to answer because there's so many people in town that really want to brand Charlotte with one industry, right? We're a fintech town. I know a lot of people personally who say this is a fintech town and others who say, no, this is a health tech town, you know, fintech, health tech, energy, you know, because we have some of these big corporate leaders and they're certainly influential. It is not enough to say that majority of startups are in those industries. They really are all over the map. You know, Charlotte is a community of innovators, of um, you know, entrepreneurs from different industries who are solving different problems. They lean a little bit more B2B because we are a corporate hub, but there's entrepreneurs in e-commerce, there's entrepreneurs in digital marketing, in, uh, in so many different spaces that I think what really makes us, and I know the, the, the city branding people aren't gonna like this, but it's, it's that mix of all of the, the, the diversity of ideas and industries that make Charlotte truly special. Um, so there is no typical entrepreneur. You know, you're gonna have stories of the, the Stacy Cassios, right? Building the types of things that they're building and then stories of, um, that you're gonna see coming out of Black Tech Charlotte and City Startup Labs. They're gonna look very different than the stories coming out of the Carolina FinTech Hub. These are all organizations that support specific segments of this startup scene. They're all very different, yet they all tried to work together and really create a better Charlotte. And that's what gets me jazzed up about it. So it's it's not so much a typical one, but rather that coming together to uh, to really grow the community. Awesome, thank you. Let's give it up for Juan, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.